In this tutorial, we will learn how to apply 3D audio positioning and panning to the cues in Atomcraft. In a game, sound cues can be played as 2D sounds or 3D sounds. A cue destined to be played as a 3D sound will typically be attached to a 3D object. The position of that object relatively to a listener will be used to calculate the volume attenuation and the levels sent to the different speakers. In Atomcraft, it's important not to confuse Pan 3D, which describes the location of the sound relatively to the speakers, and 3D positioning, which indicates how a sound should be emitted in the 3D world. Let's look at the 3D audio positioning and panning settings of a sound cue. Click on the FX1 tab of a sound cue. As we are working with 3D sound, let's choose the 3D positioning tab. This tab lets you set the actual directionality of the sound emitter by specifying the inside and the outside angle, as well as its distance volume attenuation. Here is the volume used by the 3D positioning. It corresponds to the level perceived when the listener is within the minimum distance range. Those are the center and LFE levels. Note that they are shared with Pan 3D. A change in one will reflect on the other. The Doppler factor determines how pronounced the Doppler effect is when it is applied to a 3D sound. The default setting is zero, meaning that there is no Doppler effect at all. The effective angle represents the angle within which the listener can hear the sound, and it is delimited by the internal and external angles of a cone. The volume level decreases gradually from the internal angle to the external angle. The minimum attenuation distance is the distance from the listener within which volume will stay constant. The volume level then decreases gradually until the maximum attenuation distance is reached, at which point the sound becomes silent. Notice that there is no choice of attenuation curve here. It is because the distance attenuation can be controlled by an ASAC. Therefore, it is possible to map this parameter to any ASAC curve. In order to do this, First, let's see what an ASAC control is. An ASAC control is simply an identification name that allows the programmer to pass a value from the game to ADX2 so it can be mapped to an ASAC curve in real time. In this case, the distance ASAC control lets you specify the ASAC control assigned to distance attenuation. And the angle ASAC control lets you specify the ASAC control assigned to the angle between the listener and the source. You have access to ASAC controls for both the listener and the sound source. Again, you can control the distance attenuation with an ASAC. We usually do this with a global ASAC. The global ASACs are found in the global settings section of the project tree. This one is an ASAC we made for this tutorial. Notice that there are three curves in it. The first one is used for distance volume attenuation. The second one is used for LFE attenuation. And the third one is used for the bus one send level. This concludes our tutorial about 3D audio positioning and panning. You are now able to implement distance attenuation, high frequency roll off, reverb send and LFE send levels for all your 3D sound cues.